Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. I say every time that these are the best lessons that we have ever had, but all of them are good. We have to get back to the Word of God. This is the most vital thing in the world. As we have seen what this book teaches us, we must study it and learn because the days of apostasy are up on us. And I'm going to have that either the, this week or next week, what apostasy means. That means turning from the truth. And there is a hunger for the Word of God. And we're talking about the greatest thing that can happen to any person in the world is to be taken in the rapture. And this is the greatest gift for every person that is listening. I have talked to more people about fearing death because they do not understand that we will never die. He died instead of us. But there is the most important thing is, what does he want us to do first? And I'm going to give this to you, which I give to you a lot. And this is the greatest need today. The only hope of this world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. Now, since we're talking about the rapture, who will be raptured? Only those that have been born again by the Spirit of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. That means you're born again. So here's the two agents that it takes for any person to receive the gift of eternal life. The two agents are the Spirit of God, takes the Word of God. This is why you have to have the Spirit even to know the Word of God. He's our teacher. So this is why we must know the truth. So that's why in John chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, and he said, We know that art a teacher come from God, or you could not do the miracles that you do. And Christ looked at him, and he said, You must be born again. So being born again is the way that Christ was born, through the Spirit of God came upon Mary with his heavenly Father's divine blood, and this conception heavenly, divine conception. Christ was conceived by the Holy Spirit, just like every other person in the world. And there is no other way to get to heaven. That's the only way. So then we see it being born again by the Word of God and by the Spirit of God. And this is His blood gives life to us. His divine, sinless blood. So here, what do we receive? The Word of God brings conviction. The Holy Spirit brings conversion. Then, in Revelation 1, verse 5, we are washed from our sins in His own blood. Every person has to know that. It takes the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us from all sin. And we become part of the Trinity. The Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So the Trinity, this is His divine nature, dwells in our bodies. We're brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God. And God loves us all the same. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And if you don't know this Bible verse, which I've given it out so many times, but sometimes we do not give this out, or either you miss out because I have people that say they 
I talk too fast to write them down. But John says in John chapter 1, verse 33, And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water. Baptism can't save you. That is just a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. We are baptized into his body through his baptism of the Spirit of God. Now listen at this. But he showed us when he went down into the water that he, this was his death, that he was going to be raised. His crucifixion atones our sins and his resurrection eradicates them. He never remembers them no more. So here, John baptized with water, just a picture of what Christ did for us, that he shows us that we must be born again by the Spirit of God, up on whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. The Spirit never leaves us until we take our last breath and our body goes back to dust and our spirit and soul go to be with the Lord. The, the Spirit remained on Christ. He was filled with the Spirit all of his life, and he never sinned. But he was the Son of God before he came to this earth. So this is what we have to understand. He had to become man to die. So let's listen at verse 33. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, thou shalt see the Spirit of God descending upon him and remaining on him. The same is he which baptizes you with the Holy Spirit. And then I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. He's the Son of God and the Son of Man. He is from eternity to eternity. So what do I receive then? Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So I have pardon of sin. And then I have become part of God's family. John 1.12 But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And the reason I have to repeat this, I find people all the time that wants to know how Jesus Christ was born. He was born by the Spirit of God that came into Mary's womb, and Mary gave him his body, and Christ gave the Holy Spirit gave him life, the life that he had on this earth. And then, the heirs of the riches of Christ, we become an heir of God. Now, we're going to have those lessons this week or next, so I'm not going to elaborate on them. And that is in Romans 8, 17 and verse 14. And then eternal life, Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. This is how you know you're going to be raptured, because the moment you take your last breath, your spirit and soul go to be with the Lord. But you don't have a spirit until you're born again by the Spirit of God. And that is the spiritual faculties of the Spirit. Faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. That is the spiritual faculties. And He dwells within us, and our body becomes a temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, I've given this to you so many times, but I want, this is something that is important. And John 17, 3, we know, all know John 3, 16. John 17, 3, this is life eternal, that we may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So we see in these lessons, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have an all-sufficiency and all things abound to every good work. I know this abundant life. I have lived it. It can only be lived one way, by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Just believe what he says. These have been my prayers forever.
Is my labor of love a joy? He wants us to have that abundant life. This is something that people don't know anything about because they don't know the Word of God. If you know the Word of God, you can appropriate every one of these promises by faith. Listen what he says in John 15, 11. Now this is my life, this abundant life. I, I pray that he will give me 100 fold, that's every person that's listening today, and I live by that joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And he says in verse 11, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is the way you live the abundant life, through the Word of God. It can only be done by the Spirit now and the Word. Let me, this is the most important lesson I want you to understand. The Spirit of God brings the Word of God home to every person that listens because His Word is eternal, because Christ is eternal and He's the living Word. Am I bearing fruit? We're to bear fruit. That's why I pray for 100 fold. So am I bearing fruit? John 15, 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. If you abide in me and I abide in you, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And then John 15, 8. Herein is my Father glorified that you may bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. This is why we are to bear fruit. It, whatsoever we do, do all to the glory of God. And then we see, am I glorifying God? So those three things that you must know and you must live this to have the abundant life. But you can't do it if you don't know the Word of God and His promises. Because that's the only way you receive answers to prayer. That's the only way you can serve the Lord through the power of the Spirit and the Word. So then we worship Him. Worship first. This is what we're to do. And then our walk must be pleasing to Him. That's the prayer I asked all of you to pray in Colossians 1.10, that we may walk worthy of Him unto all pleasing. And then our work. We are to give out the Word of God. This is something that I want all of you to know today, that the Old Testament scriptures reveal the existence of a supreme being. He's the creator of the whole universe and of every man, every person in the world, and he's the source of all life. Only God can give life. He is to be worshipped and to be served by all true believers. This is how I live the abundant life, to serve Him. And you can do that by copying all of these videos I told you before. And you can do that on my website is gloriousmessage.com. You can use all of those you can use every video to reach another person. This is God's will for you today. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly rejoice in thy goodness and thy grace. We thank thee that we can come to the throne of grace today to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. May every person that's listening know that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And we can know we have eternal life through the Spirit of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. Save 100-fold today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So this is just a start of all the many things that God has for you that are listening. And then we think about serving him. Now, we can't serve Him unless we are truly born again by the Spirit of God, and then He will do it all. It's not I that liveth, 
but Christ that liveth in me, and the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And if you remember John 15, 5, without me, you can do nothing. And I want you to remember this Bible verse in John chapter 3. This is so important that you put this down and you can understand why it's important for you to know the Word of God. Now, this is a new Bible verse that you must write down in your home. He says in John 3, 27, a man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. A man or woman, no person in the world can receive anything. This is our supreme being that we're to worship. This is the way you have the abundant life because all the things you work for, everything you work for is going to be burned up. In Ecclesiastes, all that you're doing, if you don't accept Christ, everything you're doing is going to be taken from you. And you're not going to take a thing with you when you go to heaven because you won't go to heaven unless you have the Spirit of God. So this is why we're talking about the rapture that you can see here. So Matthew 24, 42, watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Matthew 24, 44. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. How will the rapture take place? Vertical. We believers are going to be raptured. And he says in 1 Thessalonians 4, that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That body that's gone there. Our spirit and soul are already in heaven. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together to meet the Lord in the clouds, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Our bodies are going to be changed just like that in a twinkling of an eye. It, it could happen today, but I still think it will be on the first day of the week because that's when he arose from the dead. And the horizontal rapture is for the Jews in Matthew 24, 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the one end of heaven to the other. The ch his church believers, that uh, that's the body of believers, the church, and he's the head. We are going to be crowned in glory. The Jews are going to be crowned in Israel. You see, why did he give, uh, why did he choose Israel? To give us our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why we're to pray for them, and that's why we're to love them. And he says, if we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. Peace shall be within thy walls and prosperity in thy palaces. So he will crown his faithful ones in Israel. And this is, I want to give you the scripture, because sometimes I do forget. And he says in Zechariah 14, and listen at this, and this is the greatest blessing for the Jews today, all of you Jews that are listening. Listen what he says, Zechariah 14, 4, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave to them in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half toward the south. And then in verse 7, listen at this, but it shall come, it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that even at evening it will be light. He's the light of the world, and he puts out all darkness. That's what they have to look forward to also. You see, we don't look at the things that's happening on this earth because all of this is going to be burned up. That's the uh, Armageddon. 
And this, then, we're going to have a new heaven and new earth, but that's after the thousand-year reign with Christ, when we're going to be reigning with him in Jerusalem, in this new heavenly Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven from God. Now, you need to know this, too, because you cannot praise the Lord and ask him for blessings if you don't study this book. Chapter 21 of the book of Revelation. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. We are the bride and he's the bridegroom. And then also it tells us the same thing in Chapter 21, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, comes descending out of heaven from God. Oh, what he has prepared for us. I have not seen nor ear heard the glories he has for us. So who's going to be raptured? We already saw that, only those true believers. And then when we are gone into heaven, the seven-year tribulation that's coming on the earth is going to happen, and we'll be in heaven with him in perfect peace, perfect peace and righteousness, no sin where he is. And we are looking for that because nobody that has the right mind would not accept Christ as Savior, thinking of an eternal hell where there's nothing but darkness and sorrow every minute, pain and suffering. That's what hell is. And the seven-year tribulation period in the book of Revelation, this is almost like hell on earth because he is going to have everyone under his complete control. He, you, are, you think you're a slave today? And everybody that's not a child of God is a slave to sin. That's what his word says. You're in bondage. So you, it's going to be worse. Because if you don't worship him, then you're going to see what will happen to you. So I don't want that to happen to anybody. So we're going to stand around the judgment seat when we get to heaven. The marriage supper of the Lamb. And then Christ united with the church, the true believers... And then we're coming back to reign with him a thousand years. Now, another thing that people do not know and cannot understand until you study this book is Isaiah chapter 65. We're leaving time. Memory is gone. He says in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17. For behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth that I just read about in the book of Revelation, and the former things shall not be remembered nor come to mind. If we could remember these things, we could never have perfect peace. So we know that memory is gone. So time is memory. Past is long. The future is long. But the present is a second. It's in the very presence. He is the I am. Every second, he doesn't live in time. And we will reach the speed of light, 186,241 miles per second, and we'll get a body of light. How do we get a body of light? There is no space. There is no time and no matter. We obtain the speed of life. We have reached the door of eternity. A new body overcomes the gravitational pull, time, space, and matter. We put on the covering of light. Remember when he was on the earth, he showed us what was going to happen when he was transfigured before Peter, James, and John, and I, and when we see this. This is amazing. Elijah was there with him, and Moses was there with him. Moses, God buried Moses, and Elijah went to heaven without dying. So that's a picture of those that have died through Moses 
and Elijah will be taken up and we will never die. We will be with him. Every person that's listening right now, you have to tell people this because we are in apostasy and you're not hearing the truth. This is what God wants you to know. So we are leaving the atmosphere, this new body, no lungs, no atmosphere, no air, no flesh or blood can inherit the kingdom of God. You must be born again or you can never see the kingdom of God. Blood has oxygen, so we have no liver, no kidneys. In God's sight, no past, no future. He is. Everything is always in presence because He is. We classify time, so when we reach the speed of light, that's the second right there. That's how He's going to change us because He can do anything. Remember that. You are leaving time completely. You are entering the door of eternity. Now during the tribulation period, believers will be enjoying comfort, peace, and joy in heaven. The day of the Lord will be a literal time of judgment from which believers in the age of grace will be delivered. 1 Thessalonians 1.10, deliver us from the wrath to come. 1 Thessalonians 5.9, for God hath not appointed us to wrath. You see, this is what we need to know. So what am I to do? I am to keep myself pure. 1 Timothy 5.22, Revelation 3.10, keep the word of God, the word of his patience. Obey this book. James 1.27, keep thyself unspotted from the world. If you love the world, the love of the God is not in you. The world is enmity to all believers. The world has nothing to offer you but trouble sorrows, afflictions, persecutions. God has perfect in everything he gives to us. Perfect peace, perfect joy, perfect love for one another. And he says, keep yourself unspotted from the world. Unspotted, but keep yourself from idols. Keep yourself, 1 John 5, 21, and keep yourself in the love of God. 1 Corinthians 9, 27, keep your body under your, his subjection. Our bodies belong to him. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that we present our bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to him, which is his divine service.